Okay, so again, what I want to do is talk through, uh, like we did with the Prisoner's Dilemma, the tragedy of the commons in a sort of more condensed way. Again, I'm leaving out a bunch of details that will be important, so you do want to make sure you check the written lectures. And the way that I, I've been telling the story, it requires a bit of setup because the decision situation is a little complicated to get your head around, um, so we're going to simplify as much as we can uh, here. So. Remember, we are, the story is we are dealing with some sort of finite natural resource, so we are, it doesn't have to be a natural resource, but here we are um, in a fishing village where we've learned that if we catch more than a certain amount of fish, then there's going to be a disaster, right? We're, we're all in a lot of trouble. We are all going to lose our way of life. We're going out of business, so we're going to call that Z, if we catch Z plus one fish, we are doomed. And because there is a, um, you know, there's always uncertainty in scientific forecasts and all sorts of good things like that, we are going to assume that there's an agreement where we all decide to limit our catch to a certain amount. So we give ourselves, and this is really important, we give ourselves a safety margin, right? So the, the number of fish in between here and here, that's what I'm gonna call N, and N is basically the safety margin. And the safety margin matters an awful lot because it gives their, it lets there be room for people to cheat without anything bad happening, right? So if the number of fish that we catch is down here, there is no problem, everyone's fine, everything's great. If we catch a number of fish that's up here, there is no problem. Everything's fine. Everything's great. If we catch that many fish, so we're just underneath Z, no problem. Everything's fine. Now, obviously, in the real world, it gets a little more complicated. These boundaries are never that sharp, but that's okay. You know, you can start off by understanding this with the sharp line and then do some calculus and make it fuzzy. So, Again, the safety margin means that some people can cheat, and when they cheat, nothing bad happens. And that's really important, because you might be tempted to think, well, wait, the people who are cheating and we're in here, they're making it a little bit worse. But really, the way this kind of scenario is working is there's like a tipping point. And you're getting closer to the tipping point, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily making the situation worse. There's a lot of debate we could have about that, but that's not essential. So again, here's our main setup, okay? So there's a number of fish that if we go, we catch and we go over, we are screwed. We set a, a limit that gives us a safety margin where we're all gonna suppose that people are gonna stay under there. All right, so now the story goes, you're out uh, catching your uh, you know, allotted number of fish, your share of L, um, and you look out outside of your boat and uh, you see a fish, one more. You can catch just one more, and again, if we're still in here, there is nothing bad is gonna happen from catching that extra fish. So to set this up, we're gonna draw again our decision matrix like we did in, uh, for the prisoner's dilemma. And just to make this easier, I'm going to um, so just put in a, a few arbitrary numbers um, just so we can see it easier. So we're gonna assume that every fish can be sold for 100 bucks. And we're going to assume that the present value of a uh, of the disaster, where we go over Z, is um, a million dollar loss, and we'll just assume that's for each of us. Okay. So if you catch, if you're a fisherman in this uh, village, and you catch an extra fish, and we don't go over Z, you're going to get a hundred bucks. Actually, sorry. If no matter what you do, you're going to get the extra hundred bucks. Um, if you don't go over Z, there's no cost whatsoever. If we do go over Z, then we're all going to lose a million dollars each, right? So here's now the scenario. In this kind of scenario, you might think that you have to guess, well, you know, how many, uh, how many other people are going to cheat? How close to Z are we? But really, you can actually simplify it because there's only two scenarios that we care about, right? The two futures are where the number of fish that we catch total ends up being less than or equal to Z. And in that scenario, everything's fine. We go on, we have enough fish for next year, it's great. Or 
we catch more than Z and we're all screwed. We have a disaster, everybody's gonna have a million dollar loss. And so if you make the columns the futures that you can be in, the rows are gonna be your choice. So if you think back to the prisoner's dilemma, this is where Rabbit came in, right? Rabbit was the, the rows, the world here is in the place of Red Dog. So the choice that any one of us has to make is between um, we, let's do it, I think I had the ratting on the bottom. So here we catch extra and here don't catch extra. So our top left box is going to be the situation in which you don't catch the extra fish and everything is fine. The bottom left box is where you catch the extra, everything is fine. Up here, uh, top right, you're gonna have where you catch, where you don't catch the extra and there's a disaster. And the bottom right is gonna be where we catch extra and there's a disaster. So now just to fill this out, we just take these numbers and plug them in. So as I progressively ruin my sheet because I keep writing the wrong thing, uh, on the top row, you're not catching anything any extra fish, so there's no change on that, right? So zero extra, right? You're still getting your normal catch, you're still making your normal fishy bucks, um, but you're not getting any extra. And down here, you catch the one extra fish, so you get an extra 100 bucks, and then on this column here, there's gonna be there's the disaster, so the upper right box, you are losing a million bucks. And in the bottom right box, you are also losing a million bucks. Oops. And in the left column, everything's fine. So there's no, uh, there's no loss. Just to fill this out. Okay, and then the last thing we want to do, just to make it really clear, um, and again, all we're doing is, is defining the payoff structure. We're defining the costs and benefits of each possible future. Either things are fine or there's a disaster, and each possible action. Either you catch the extra fish, sorry, catch the extra fish, or you don't catch the extra fish. So then we total it up, and over here, where you don't catch the extra fish and everything is fine, you just stay where you are, there's no plus, no minus. Over here, where you don't catch the extra fish and there's a disaster, you lose a million bucks. There is no offsetting um, gain, it's just a loss. Down here, on the lower left-hand uh, box, where you catch the extra fish and everything is fine, well, you get away with it. You, get, you end up 100 bucks richer, right? And down here, this is the crucial one. This is the one that's kind of like the you know, they're both prisoners ratting on each other. You catch the extra and there's the disaster. And that means that you end up with, hopefully I did the math right. <laughs> you end up with a small offsetting loss, or sorry, you end up with the big loss, but it's offset by a little bit. So that's important because now we can just do exactly the same logic that we did with the prisoner's dilemma. And we'll use the shortcut version. There's a longer version here, but it's complicated enough as it is. So you suppose that we are in the future where everything is gonna be fine. What should you do? Well, you can either end up with no extra dollars or 100 extra dollars. 100 extra dollars is better than no extra dollars. So what should you do? You should catch the extra fish. Great. So if you now imagine that we're in the scenario where there's going to be the disaster, well, you're going to either lose a million bucks or lose 999,900 bucks. And the small offsetting, you know, the small offset is, it's still a huge loss, but it's still slightly better, right? So what are you going to do? You're going to catch the extra fish. All right. So no matter which future you are in, the better thing for you to do is to catch the extra fish. That same thing is gonna be true of everybody else in the village. So since we're all rational, we're all gonna catch the extra fish. And even though we know that we're gonna be a in a disaster scenario if we do, if we you know, catch the extra fish, it will be rational for us to all catch the extra fish and we will end up in the disaster scenario and we're all screwed. And that's why it's a tragedy of the, com a tragedy of the commons is a rational trap. The costs and benefits of each possible action 
add up in a way so that no matter what future you're looking at, it's better for you to do the non-cooperative thing here, catching the extra fish in a, you know, global warming, it's continued to release hydrocarbons into, or not hydrocarbons, carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the world, into the atmosphere. In uh, the traffic version of the tragedy of the commons, it's to drive your own car rather than take the bus. Whatever it is, you, it's going to be better to do the non-cooperative thing. And so unless we can find a way to change this payoff structure, and by that I mean we need to somehow make it more costly to catch the extra fish or more beneficial to not catch the extra fish. If we do that, we can shift these numbers around and so then it becomes rational for everybody to stick to the agreement, stay and we'll all end up staying under L and the world will be wonderful and great, but it won't be wonderful, wonderful and great unless we can change the payoff structure.